So I don't know about you, but my biggest, my most favorite thing that I can do with my sourdough is like try new artistic things with it. So I love different scoring designs and, and things like that. And I'd love to kind of do some videos on scoring eventually because it's just something that I really love to do. But another thing that I really think is super fun with sourdough is that you can make it colorful and you can make it really fun. The thing is, so I way back years ago, I started kind of dabbling in using colors in my sourdough and I started with beet juice. So instead of using water in my sourdough recipe, I swapped it out for, um, I boiled down beets and I used the water from that. And the dough was so vibrant and so pink and it was so beautiful. But then when it went into the oven and it baked, all the pigment in the beets turned brown. So there was zero um, redness left, the inside of the loaf looked white and the outside looked brown. So I did a deep dive into kind of like why that happens. And I and, and it happens, you know, not just with beets, but other kind of, um, if people are using different powders. So I'm gonna show you a whole bunch of the ones that I have here, but even things like that, it can really kind of uh, draw the pigment out of the colors when you put it into the oven. And so there is some science behind that and I'm not going to get into why that happens, but I am going to tell you how to make it not happen. So along my research, I discovered that adding ascorbic acid or vitamin C to your bread dough um, can maintain the pigment in the color that you're using. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to teach you how to make really beautiful, colorful bread. And we're going to do this as sort of like a series. So today I'm going to teach you kind of the science of like how to use colors in your bread. I'm going to show you some different um, powders that I have here that I use and what colors they produce. But the main trick to getting these colors to stick in your bread is vitamin C powder or ascorbic acid, I guess. So I just crushed up um, like, a, like a regular vitamin C, that tablet that you put in your water and it dissolves. I just crushed it up. I'm gonna use it in my bread. The trick is here, and the thing you have to really remember is that vitamin C or ascorbic acid really accentuates the fermentation of your sourdough. So it speeds everything up essentially. So you really wanna make sure that you're not like putting this in your dough and like walking away from it. You really need to be there and continue to manipulate the dough and work the dough and, and all those things. So you have to really keep an eye on it if you're using ascorbic acid in your dough, but this is how you're gonna make the pigment stick in your dough. So I'm gonna show you some of the ones that I have. Um, I'm going to walk through, uh, we're, we're not going to go through the whole bread recipe. If you are interested in learning more about my method of bread and my entire recipe from start to finish, I have lots of courses on it. And we also have a monthly subscription that's all about sourdough and recipes and meal plans and grocery lists and everything that you need to know to implement it in your kitchen. Um, today I'm just literally going to show you how I add the color into my sourdough. I'm going to show you how it turns out in the end. So we have blueberry powder here. So this is essentially just freeze dried blueberries. Um, it's 100 grams. You don't need a lot when you're putting it into sourdough. This is gonna give you like a purple color in your, in your sourdough. Strawberry powder is gonna give you a pink. So if you're not using ascorbic acid and use strawberry powder in your, in your bread dough, um, the pink will be really, really pale. But if you're using ascorbic acid and the way that it reacts with each other, you can get a little bit more of a vibrant pink, uh, depending on how much you're using in your dough. Purple sweet potato is probably one of my favorites. This is so beautiful. And I love this because you can mix it with your rice flour and you can dust the top of your dough with your purple sweet potato. So if you're making like a rainbow loaf, and you really want to do purple on the top instead of white, you can do this, works really, really nicely. Um, but it also gives uh, a lovely color in your bread as well. Butterfly pea powder. So this one's my favorite for topping your bread. This one's my favorite for using in bread. Um, this gives your bread the coolest color and it can be, and it's really uh, vibrant. So um, it, it holds its pigment really well. You can actually probably get away with using this even without the ascorbic acid. Um, it's a really great one to use in your bread. It gives it like a really beautiful, um, like purpley blue color. Blue spirulina is one that I'm just learning about and dabbling in. So I actually don't have a lot to say about this one just yet because I'm still experimenting with it, but I will keep you posted on, on it because um, it's very vibrant and I'm curious to see how the pigments held. Um, there's a little bit of like science 
testing, I guess, behind using these types of ones, but I am gonna kind of play around with it and dabble in it. And hopefully in our little series, I can give you some more information about that. Um, so activated charcoal, um, I actually use this on top of my bread. So I'm making like a pink loaf or even just a regular old white loaf. Uh, dusting with charcoal powder, it makes the top black. So often you'll see like dusting with rice flour to make your design stand out when you're um, scoring your loaves. You'll dust with like a white rice flour um, or brown rice flour and it will stand out your designs. Well, this is sort of the same idea except for this is black and it's so cool. It's really messy on your hands and stuff, but it is really, really cool. It shows the design really, really well. It's fun if you're doing like intricate designs like flowers and things like that. Um, I, I love using uh, the black, uh, the charcoal. So those are the ones that I actually have on hand in my house that I'm gonna show you how to use. And um, we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna show, I'm gonna show you how to make your bread colorful, but I'm gonna show you how to make individual kind of colored loaves. And then I'm gonna show you how to color your dough and add them all together. You can have like the most potent, deep, beautiful coloring in your rainbow loaf um, without actually using like conventional food dyes. We're just using food grade products. Um, these are just literally uh, freeze dried powders and natural powders. And we're gonna make some really cool, fun, beautiful bread. Uh, another one that I don't have on hand right now, it's actually in my cabinet, is it, but you can just get at the grocery store. All of these can be found on Amazon. Um, so I'll put that in the notes. Um, I'll put like the, the brand that I use and then, uh, they're uh, literally, you just have to look them up on Amazon and you can buy them and you know, they're really easy to get. Uh, but I just get turmeric powder. So if you want to make yellow, I don't like you doing like a whole yellow loaf. I find it looks a little bit odd and it can, turmeric will flavor your loaf quite potently. So it can have a bit of a weird taste. Um, but I've done, I like using it in my rainbow loaf. So one aspect of my loaf, I will add turmeric to make yellow and add it in with my blues and my purples and pinks and that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, so all of these, we have like blue, pink, purple, uh, we have our activated charcoal, we have our yellow from our turmeric, and then we have our sorbic acid to kind of bring it all to life. So let's get started on a couple loaves, uh, for this particular video and we'll try them out and I'll show you what colors we come out with. So basically how this is gonna work, when you're ready to add your salt to your dough, which we are now, um, you're gonna add your ascorbic acid and uh, we're gonna mix that all up first with the salt and you may need a little tiny bit more water in order to hydrate that. And then once all that's incorporated, uh, we're gonna add in our color. So we're gonna do our purple one first. So I have my um, organic traditions blueberry um, powder so it's just essentially freeze-dried blueberries ground into a powder okay so we're just going to take our salt and spread that across and I'm going to just use a little water on my hands just to mix that into the dough I'm not going to fully mix it in yet we're going to take our ascorbic acid and we're gonna sprinkle that over our dough. And I am gonna use more water in order to incorporate that into the dough because we wanna hydrate that. And it's gonna sizzle a bit when you do it and it's gonna turn your dough really orange. And it does flavor the dough, okay? So that's something to keep in mind. It is gonna flavor the dough. Um, when you bake it, it will take most of that out. So it's not like it's, like you'll smell it right now and you'll be like, my gosh, this is gonna really, smell like or taste like vitamin C or orange juice and it does flavor it a little bit but not enough that it makes a huge difference okay so now again I didn't do a lot of water in that you want to almost do a lot of water because it will start to kind of break up the dough so you can kind of work that in all right move that so now we're going to take our blueberry powder and just kind of make sure there's no clumps in there and we're going to start to work that into the dough. This is a really important part because this is a powder. 
um, you really want it evenly mixed in the dough. That's the hardest part because you'll see there's lots of spots without it. Okay, so you're just gonna get in there with your hands. If you have a mixer, you can put it in with a mixer. I like using my hands, but it's kind of like whatever your preference is. And it's going to kind of take a minute for it to kind of mix into the dough. It's gonna not be, you can tell, again, you might wanna add water to your hands in order to help kind of hydrate that into the dough. All right, so here is the second batch. So we have our salt and our ascorbic acid already in there. We're going to add our butterfly pea flour powder. And you're just going to start just like gently kind of work that into the dough. It's not, it has to sit for a bit before it like really incorporates through. I find the blueberry, I'll show it to you. It doesn't really incorporate through, um, as as well the uh the sweet potato flour or potato powder is a little bit more kind of penetrating to the dough um but i do like the blueberry um however i will say that today that sweet that this is the first time i'm using this brand of blueberry powder and it's actually looking different than I'm used to. So I'll, I'll, I'm interested to see kind of how that loaf turns out. But you can see this is starting to really incorporate into this dough. You don't need a lot of uh, the pea flour powder in order to really get in there and color the dough. But you really wanna make sure that you spend the time in this step. Every time you coil fold, it will help mix it in even further. You want to spend as much time in this step really kind of getting the color and the pigment in to the dough. You can really see the blue starting to kind of come out here. This is just a first glance of what the dough looks like. I'm going to go through the bulk form and do my coil folds and things like that. Uh, so that's the purple, that's the blue. Um, I'll show you kind of like as we get into the bulk form a little more if they change color at all. And, um, and then obviously when we're shaping them, getting them into the oven. So we're gonna cover those up and let them rest <clears throat> in the bulk fermentation and we'll see how they do. So unfortunately it got dark. So with the fluorescent lighting, it is tricky to see the true color. This is actually quite a bit more purple in real life. And I will say that um, halfway through the bulk ferment, I decided to add some of my purple uh, sweet potato powder, just about a teaspoon. I wasn't really happy with this uh, blueberry powder or that brand of it, I should say. So um, that's just a full disclaimer. I have blueberry powder and the purple sweet potato powder in this loaf. And then obviously I just have the pea powder in this one. This one is so beautiful. I love using the pea powder, but um, yeah. So we're gonna shape these soon and put them in the Benetton baskets. Okay, so these are have been proofing in the fridge. So it's just really funny because these were the exact same size dough. This one is really dense. Um, I haven't quite figured out if that's due to the pea flour powder or if it's because this one had a lot more ascorbic acid in it and ascorbic acid really kickstarts and like accentuates your fermentation as I mentioned before. So um, really interesting experiment and you know, you can see the, the the very vast difference between the two doughs and you know they had the exact same thing done to them other than this one has more ascorbic acid and that was just simply a mistake uh okay so basically it'll be interesting to see how this one bakes up but we're going to get them into the oven um how i'm going to do this so what i did was i mixed equal parts sweet potato purple sweet potato powder and flour and i'm going to dust the, my purple loaf with purple and then I'm gonna dust my blue loaf with charcoal. You wanna be really careful with charcoal because it stains literally everything. So um, we're gonna dust this on and then, uh, yeah, I only have one of these. Actually, I have a larger one. So you, you probably don't wanna like use your charcoal and then try to use your purple or it will like kind of cross contaminate and you'll get some black on your purple loaf. But um, yeah, we're gonna do a black top on the blue and a purple top on the purple.
All right, so I scored my black loaf. You can see the blue coming out from the inside, so that's super cool. Again, like <laughs> it really just stains everything so quickly. Anyways, I did get a little bit of black on here, but that's all right. Um, we now have streaks of black on my purple loaf. That sucks, but that's okay. Okay, so we're just gonna come in here and score this. And we're just gonna do one big score down the side. And hopefully that black doesn't show up too much once it's baked in the oven. Okay, let's get these in the oven. Oh, while we're waiting for those to bake, we're gonna move on to the next uh, batch that we're gonna do. So this batch, we're actually going to do a swirl. So I'm gonna teach you how to add two colors together to make like a really dynamic swirl in the inside of your bread. So today we're gonna to be using, instead of the blueberry, we're gonna be using our sweet potato powder and our charcoal. So we're gonna make a black and purple swirled loaves. So how that's gonna work is we're gonna make two batches of uh, one loaf bread. So each batch is gonna make one loaf and then we're going to divide them in half and we're going to combine them we're still going to have two loaves but we're going to combine them so that one like each loaf is swirled with purple and with black so it's going to be really messy i'm going to show you a different way of adding the color into your dough this time so last time we added it with ascorbic acid uh, most specifically because we were using blueberry and the pigments in blueberry are tend to be a little bit more like um, beets in the sense that they're not really heat stable so um, that company again is a bit of a experiment for me i've never used them before so i don't actually know how that's going to turn out but typically when you're using those types of food grade um, powders they need something to stabilize them when they're when they're cooked um, with well these are all food grade but with the sweet potato that tends not to be as much the case so you can add uh, the sweet potato powder in there we're gonna add it right into the flour so this is sort of like a personal preference I'm gonna show you kind of like how I'm adding it in uh, I don't have exact measurements for how I do that because I sort of just go with how it's looking in the dough. Um, so it'll be, a, you know, I would expect a couple te uh, teaspoons of the purple uh, powder. It may be a little bit more. So we're gonna add in, uh, we're gonna do like our, our wet ingredients and then we're gonna add in our flour and we're gonna put the powder right in there with it. So um, yeah, so we got our two bowls and we have our two powders and we're gonna get really messy because these are probably the two messiest. Well, actually the blue spirulina is probably, that and the charcoal are the two messiest. But um, yeah, so we're gonna mix those together. I like mixing messy powders in with the flour specifically because especially if you have a mixer, I don't, but um, if you're when you're mixing up the dough, you can get most of that mixed up before you actually have to use your hands. And so it tends to save your hands a little bit um, rather than letting it go through, it's kind of like Audelie's process. And then when we add in our salt, we add in the color that typically is all on your hands. And so this is kind of a way to get it into your dough and mix it up, um, before you have to like really start using your hands. Here we have our two batches and I am just going to, so this is actually mixed because I used it to dust the top of my other loaf. So it's not actually two tablespoons of the purple powder. It would be more like one. And I like to kind of just gauge because everybody likes it different, right? So if you want a really vibrant purple, so I definitely want more than that. Okay, so that was about one tablespoon. I'm gonna add another tablespoon to this. Obviously you can see it's a lot more vibrant when it's not mixed. And we're gonna just start mixing that in. And as it sits, it also will start to take on more pigment. So um, you'll see kind of, it's a little bit more of like a lighter lavender. And I want it a little more vibrant than that. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit more. And you'll see, obviously, it will, um, this is a 70% hydration recipe, but as you add powders into it, it kind of 
mimics a little bit of a lower hydration, which can be nice. Okay, so we're just gonna add some water to my hands and kind of mix that in. And we'll just see what color um, it looks like. Oftentimes what will happen is um, when I do it like this, uh, I will let this sit in the autolays. This actually needs a little more hydration in the dough. So we're gonna add a little, just a little bit more water. Sometimes that helps incorporate the pigment a little bit better too. Um, when I let this sit in the autolays, um, I'll see kind of where it's at when we add the salt in. And then often when I've been researching kind of colors and people who add color and pigment to their sourdough, a lot of people add more at that stage when they add the salt in. So I'm gonna leave it as, as is. And then once we kind of let this sit and it's gonna expand and kind of do its thing, we'll come back. This is also half whole wheat, that's why it's a little more pasty. Um, I ran out of my white flour, so we're doing half whole wheat today. So that's why the dough seems to be a little bit more, um, chunk of flour there, a little bit more pasty. Okay, so that's gonna go over there. We're gonna cover that up. And now we're gonna do our charcoal one. Oh, I don't love, I don't like doing this one, but I love how it turns out in the end. Um, so I'm just gonna take about a tablespoon of the charcoal powder. You really don't need as much, obviously. It's about as black as it can possibly be. Um, it still has some purple on it, but that's not a big deal. So again, as you let this sit, it's going to take on more pigment. Um, we did some black pancakes today and they were pretty cool. They were like a jet black. So what we're kind of going for with our dough is the same thing. I want like a really black, black contrast to the purple, or you could do like a gray, kind of whatever your preference is. This is gonna need some more water as well. I find that the charcoal really uh, like under hydrates the dough, so you'll have to add more. There we go. So I'm gonna add a little more there. So these loaves end up being, or especially this one, end up being closer to about a 75% hydration. Okay. So that is the black. Um, that's black enough for me. Uh, if I feel like I need a little more, once I add the salt, then I might do that. But that seems to be, that will bake up nice and dark. Okay, so we're gonna let those sit covered and then uh, we'll assess them when we add our salt. So here they are in the oven. Um, I have to say, well, we'll see what we get when we cut into this one. I'm not super impressed with the blueberry powder. And then this is the pea powder. Um, so that's like a nice like presentation on the outside, but we'll see what it looks like when, when we cut into it. I'm gonna really let these fully cool before we cut into them. But um, isn't it funny the difference in the size? I just can't get over it. It'd be interesting to see, um, well, I guess when we swirl the other two, if it makes a difference. But anyway, this is what they look like out of the oven. To our swirl. Um, I am gonna add a little bit of more powder to this one, I think, because I'm just feeling like it needs a little bit of extra. So we're gonna add our salt. There you go. And then I'm gonna add the purple powder right on top. I'm just gonna go right in with a teaspoon. And we're gonna just sprinkle some around on that. Okay, and then I always wet my hands. They're gonna get covered in, oh, let's move this. They're gonna get covered in purple, but let's mix that salt in, or, and powder in. And this is a stiffer dough, um, I think because of the whole wheat. So you just want to really kind of get that mixed in there. Oh, clump of powder, uh, flour there. And that didn't add a lot to it, but it was enough that it will hopefully color it a little bit more. Okay, so we're just gonna 
circle that back around, mix that in. And then we have our charcoal. Oops. We'll mix that in. Kind of twist it into the dough. And then if you're finding that you know it's a little loose, you can go around and do some slap folds. So again, if you're interested in more of my actual sourdough process, um, I have classes and loads of resources in our monthly subscription. So I'm not gonna go through the bulk ferment because we're not actually adding any more color in the bulk ferment. So we'll come back when it's time to shape and I will show you how to mix the two doughs together. All right, so this is actually hilarious. Um, I just move this up so you can see. Uh, so this is actually a really fun inside with the blueberry. So with the sweet potato, it's not as like marbled. But this is kind of neat. Um, it's not exactly what I was looking for. I do not know what happened with this one, but I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna make a whole new one so that we can see it for real. But like, look at this. Ah, <laughs> that is some fool's crumb right there. So I'm not really sure what happened. I don't know if it's how I added the, the pea powder in there. So I'm gonna make a whole new one and I'm gonna add it with the flour at the beginning and we're gonna see if that makes a difference. But you know, it doesn't make any sense. It was fermented the exact same as the other one same leaven, all that. It's gummy. It's very strange. So I'm assuming it's the way that I mixed the pea powder into the dough. So I'm going to do this one again. Um, I've never had that happen, but we're going to do it again and we're going to try it a different way. Anyway, I like to show you my fails too. So that is the two. I really like the blueberry. Um, excited to see what the sweet potato looks Here like. Here we have our I divided them in half. So they went through their bulk fermentation. We are dividing them in half. So I'm just gonna set one of each half over here because we're gonna do them one at a time. And we are going to start to laminate the dough. What I'm finding with this dough is that it's not stretching you know, as well as I want. So we're not gonna stretch it too, too much. I don't want it to start ripping and I want it to be relatively even. Okay. So, and we're going to fold it up. So we want it to be kind of like a bit symmetrical. All right. So there's that one. We're just going to set that one over there and we're going to do the same thing to the charcoal and you can put whichever color you want on the bottom. So I'm actually, I'm going to do one kind of a beach where the black is on the bottom and then one where the purple is on the bottom. It doesn't really make a difference. It just makes a difference. So for example, if I was to put um, this one on the bottom, which I think I'm just gonna flip it over, then this is gonna be like, like a black loaf, okay? And then vice versa. Okay, so, oops, that's what you don't want to happen. So you're gonna do this really gently. You're gonna pick it up and you're gonna match the two doughs together and you're gonna finish the laminating. Oops. Okay. There's a lot of different ways that you can do this. Um, I, I like to fully stack the two. I, I find it gives them more of like a spiral loaf. But another way you can do it is when you're laminating, you just overlap pieces of the dough and then you can fold it all in and it'll be kind of just like chunks of color in your dough. So it just, it really just depends on what you are, are looking for. So we're just gonna fold it in. And we're just going to make it into our oval loaf. 
okay? I like to use these ones when I'm doing stuff like this because I don't have to add, um, I don't have to add flour to the top. I can just put it right into the banneton. So I'm just gonna pinch under those sides as best I can. And place it right into the banneton basket. Okay, so we're gonna cover that up and we're gonna put it right into the fridge. Okay. And that's it. So this one broke open a bit, which really doesn't bother me a whole lot um, in the sense that it's going to bake and we want it to be kind of swirly anyways. But it'll be interesting to see which one works out the best. Um, I find that the black dough has a lot more stretch to it um, and the purple dough doesn't seem to have as much stretch to it. Um, that could That is obviously because of the sweet potato flour. Uh, it's just something that I'm kind of like really learning and I am learning that it does alter your dough quite a bit. So we'll see how these go. So we're going to put them in the fridge and we'll see what they look like when they're Okay. Cooked. So these are out of the oven. Um, this one is actually a lot fluffier than the other one. So we're going to actually flop these over onto our bread mats. Okay, so it actually broke open in that one spot there. And then this one really broke open. So we're gonna flip this one over too. Actually, we'll wait on that one. Okay, okay so I'm actually gonna take some flour and we're gonna dust the top um, with some lighter flour, just so that when we score it, the design will actually come through. You don't have to do that, but I kind of like a different contrast. Okay, and then we're just gonna do something really simple. So it's kind of neat because when you score through this, you can see the black and then the purple underneath. It's really funky. Okay, and then we'll do our deep expansion score. Okay, I scored this and it didn't actually record, unfortunately. Um, but it's really neat. You can see kind of the distribution of the color already. So like black, purple, black, purple, black, purple. And then we have our purple one over here. We can mostly just see the black right now. So it'll be interesting to see how that one kind of, how it looks when we bring it out of the oven. So we're gonna stick these in now and uh, we'll cut into them once they're cool. All right, so here's the open of these ones. They're super fun. So because we stacked them, they have like kind of a swirl in there. So you can do that with any color. Black and purple is a little bit kind of dark maybe for me, but a blue and a purple would be really cool. Or even like three different colors would be really neat in there. But it's still like a nice soft sourdough. <laughs> it's fun. Pink and purple would be neat too. So I've been doing some research on what happened with my blue loaf the other day. So that was the first time I'd added ascorbic acid to the butterfly pea flour powder. Um, so what I was reading is more like the beets and the blueberries and the strawberries and those types of uh, powders that you can put into your baking that are really not stable with heat. That's what benefits from the um, from using this ascorbic acid, and not necessarily things like the purple sweet potato flour or powder, the pea powder, um, you know things like charcoal, matcha if you're doing green, um, turmeric, like those types of. Uh, powders are a lot more heat stable, so they don't necessarily need the ascorbic acid. So I don't know if that's what happened uh, or if it was when I added it into the dough. So we're gonna do it differently this time. I have, uh, I'm gonna add it in right into my master recipe. I'm gonna make two loaves. I'm gonna add it right into the flour and we're gonna mix it all together at the very beginning. And we'll see if that gives us a different result than the last time, because um, I'm determined I've, I've made beautiful blue loaves or indigo, I guess, like loaves with this before, and I'm not sure 
why it didn't work the last time. So we're gonna make it work this time. Here we have my recipe is mixed up or all in the bowl and not mixed up yet. So we're gonna go in and we're just gonna add a couple teaspoons of the pea flour powder. And it's crazy to me how like gray it looks when you first add it in and then it actually it just becomes this most beautiful vibrant color okay so we're gonna start to mix that up so i'm actually probably gonna do closer to a tablespoon of the powder so the more you add in obviously the brighter the dough is so if you want it to be like a paler blue, um, then you can put less in. Uh, my daughter's birthday is this weekend, so I'm trying to make really fun like unicorn type bread. So we have our swirled bread that I froze, and we're gonna make like fun French toast out of the colored bread uh, for her birthday morning, so. Okay. Let's just mix that around a little more and then maybe add some more in. I think I used about two, two and a half um, teaspoons of the powder in there. So as always, I'm gonna leave that to sit in the autolays. And once we come back and add the salt, cause the longer it sits, obviously, the more it kind of takes on the pigment. And so we'll see what it looks like when we go to add the salt. And we may, you know, sometimes I may need to add a little bit more color in there depending on what it looks like. So we're just gonna kind of go, this is called wet kneading. So you're just gonna go around the outside. It just helps develop the gluten of your dough a little bit better. And in this case, it helps kind of mix that color in even more. So you'll see kind of streaking there. Um, that will all mix in and I think we'll have like a really nice color. So when we come back and add the salt, We'll take a look and see where we're at. Oh, it's been sitting here for like half an hour. I actually think I'm gonna leave it just as is. I think as we go through the bulk fermentation, this pigment will, whoops, um, kind of settle in even more. So we're gonna add our salt. Just break up the clumps of salt there. And a little water on my hands. We're just gonna mix that into the dough. Okay, so when we're going through like this, I kinda like to mimic, sort of like I'm using a mixer, and then we're gonna get some water on our hands and then just do some coil folds um, just to kinda bring that structure around and some more wet kneading. So again, I go over a lot of this stuff in my classes, a little more in depth, but um, you can kind of see how it transforms the dough when you add the salt in. It Salt tightens up the gluten structures. And so when you put salt in your dough, it starts to make it a lot more smooth. I mean, obviously it's pretty veiny because we have the, the color in there, but um, as we go through the bulk fermentation, it will start to get smoother and smoother, you know, and bluer and bluer and all that stuff. So we'll just leave that like that. So it's done its bulk fermentation. And we're just gonna take it out of the bowl here and we're gonna divide it in half. And so you just, I like to weigh it just to make sure that we have equal halves because they're gonna bake in the oven at the same time. So those are looking good. Um, there's quite a bit of structure to these loaves, so I'm actually not gonna do a pre-shape. I'm just gonna fold it over and spread it out. You can see like there is quite a bit of structure. Um, we did do a lamination in the bulk fermentation, but there's not a ton of elasticity in these. So anyways, I'm gonna stretch the top down We're just going to roll them up. <clears throat> just doing this one into a round 
loaf and I'm just gonna leave it for a minute and then we'll get it into the Banneton basket. Um, so my Banneton baskets for this recipe are uh, seven inch Banneton's if you're doing round. Um, I like to do a liner on the inside and so they just seem to create a really nice oven spring and a nice uh, loaf from that. So we're gonna get that into the Banneton basket, flip it over. We're gonna put those right into the fridge. We're gonna get this into the oven. This was proofing in the fridge overnight and it's a really nice color. So we're gonna actually take some purple on top. You can wet the dough too and it helps it stick a little bit more, kind of like whatever your preference is. that around on top and we'll score it quickly and get it into the oven so I'm just gonna go and do a really quick square and it's really fun because you can see the blue coming out underneath maybe just like a really quick score in the center there okay we'll get those in the oven so this one got a little misshapen um, in the oven because it was too big and it flattened along the side of my Dutch oven. But they're so fluffy and they turned out really well. So this is the oval one that I did. And look at the inside. So fun. It's a really nice fluffy loaf. The blue distributed really nice and evenly and then the purple on top is just really nice. So that concludes our colors for this section or for this session. And uh, yeah, hope you love it.